Now, in today's video, we're taking a look at the T1 Pro from FL Sun. Now, this is an upgrade version of the current T1 that's in production. Uh, what I'm going to do is share with you my experience with the T1 Pro, but this is going to be more of a first look video. The firmware and the slicing software are still receiving updates. I don't have final versions, but I've had this now for a couple weeks and I've been running prints and I want to show you how it's performing for me. Now, we run a small farm, so I'm going to give you my perspective of someone who actually generates functional parts for a farm for commercial use. And as you can see, we've been using FL Sun products for a very long time, and they're still in production within our production line of 3D printers. You can see I have my trusty B400 and one of my first, which was my Super Racer right behind me. So we're going to take a look at the T1 Pro. I'm going to give you my perspective, and I can tell you there's a lot of potential. There's a lot of things to like, but I also expect that there's going to be also further improvements to this product line. So let's get right to it. Now, before going through the printer capabilities and just taking a look at the printer, I wanted to show you the prints. This is something that's really important to me as someone who runs uh, a small business. And I want to make sure that I have good quality, that I have accurate dimensions, and that it's repeatable and something that we can run consistently. Plus, speed is really important to me. And what you can see here is a couple things. First of all, we did tests using FL Sun's filament. Now, I don't run in our production line, FL Sun filament. We're actually running, I'll show it right here. We uh, run Polymakers, uh, Polyterra PLA. Uh, we do most of our prints are going to be PLA based. We do some PETG, we do some ASA, and there's some stuff that we do that is more abrasive, more durable, but those materials we don't really get requests for. Most of what we do is going to be in PLA. So the grays you're going to see is what we typically run. And I also run some black stuff as well. So black PLA. Now, a couple of things. First of all, we did run a Benchy. And keep in mind that this is at the fastest possible speeds. We'll see all the stats in a couple seconds. And uh, this is with no calibration. So I was using the standard profiles that FL Sum provided. And I really didn't do any kind of flow test or anything like that. Because I just wanted to see how ready would it be right out of the box. So uh, this is using, again, the... PLA, the, the uh, Polymaker PLA, and this is uh, their fastest Benchy, right? And as you can see, it's not perfect in any way, but it's not horrible either. So you can see some defects that you have right here, uh, but this was at the fastest possible speeds that you could get on this printer. And this printer prints fast, right? So this is a super fast printer. Matter of fact, you see in the background that I have several bamboos. Most of my farm uh, is in the bamboo, especially if I can fill, uh, fit things in that build plate. When I need larger stuff, I have to use some other machines. So I do have like a Prusa. I also have some other brands, like I do have many Kitties as well as that I use. But uh, what we do is we print with this, and you can see here that there's some opportunities here for sure. But that's just a start. Uh, the other thing I wanted to see was how well did it do, and oh, then I just broke that, how well it did in some of these torture tests, right? Uh, the actual everything, nothing stuck, right? So the tolerance levels were fine. And you can see that for the most part, it passed. Uh, some areas right here, it failed. There's some adjustments that I can do, and I could probably leave the door open uh, when I'm doing this because the chamber does uh, hold heat really well. And, and keep in mind, it's not a heated chamber, but it does hold heat really well. So I could probably open up the door to make sure that these overhangs don't have the defects that they had. But overall, with some tweaking, again, I think that this could be greatly improved. Uh, I didn't do any kind of tweaking whatsoever. And what you see is pretty much with the standard profiles. Now, uh, we also then did more with their PLA. And I wanted to see if there was any difference between my, you know, my standard batch and what they do. And what you can see here is theirs. And very similar, good quality, right? But I'm still having the overhang here uh, defect. But again, this is not final software. The slicer software is not final, nor is the firmware final. So I'm just doing my own testing. Uh, first layers, though, are pretty spectacular. So I really like that. Here's another overhang, a uh, very complex test. And this was super fast as well. Every one of these was lightning fast to print. And I was actually happy with this one. Uh, while I have some stringing here, some defects here, for the most part, I thought that this went really, really, really well. So you can see what this looks like. And then again, that first layer is pretty spectacular. Now, we also did with their filament, We what I'll do is I'll produce a lot of these. These are uh, for vents, different reducers and expanders, depending on what 
um, is needed. And we'll look at that in a couple seconds. But I did also this cube. And this cube turned out really, really nice, right? So take a look at that. XY cube. Quality is good. I can't really complain about this at all. And from a dimensional perspective, and again, this is with the standard slicer setting. It's not any kind of correction. Let's take a look at what we have. So we have, let's make sure we switch this so that we have millimeters. And we're going to zero that out to make sure we're okay. So you can see that's a little bit 19.9, right? We go over here. We have 20.13. Go right here, we have 19.9 again. If I go up here, you have 20.14, right? Uh, you can see here, here's a slight defect. I noticed that the filament got a little tangled as it was being fed, so that's what accounts for that. But that's, that's kind of like the quality I have there. Now, other models that I checked out, and these are all print in place. This was with using, this filament is probably two years old. Uh, didn't dry it, put it in the machine. And I also, this is not intended to be high speed filament. Uh, so this is like a translucent purple and it works, right? Quality is good, you know, for, for something like this. It's not the most expensive filament. Matter of fact, after I use this filament, I tossed it because it just doesn't suit anything that we would do. Uh, here's another piece, right? This is, all of this stuff worked fine and you know, you can see how nicely it moves. And this again was with their, uh, with their slicer as well as their software. Here's another piece that we did. We did one of these, why not? Uh, I don't produce these as part of what we do, but you can see print in place and it's functional. We then also did one of these guys right here. This is like a tea light and it printed fine. Again, not too crazy about the color, but it still did well. The quality is there. Detail is also really nice. And you can see again, that first layer is pretty spectacular. That's one of the things I'll say about this printer. The first layer of printing is really good. Now, this is where I wanted to see how it would produce some of the products that we have in our product line. And this right here did really, really well. This was fast. And on average, if I compare it to my, to my uh, let's say any of the bamboos that I have or some of the other printers, the FL Sun T1 Pro is on average 20 plus minutes faster than my other printers. Again, let me say that again. So as I look at this print itself and compare it to what I'm getting off of my bamboos, this is coming out uh, 20 minutes faster. And the quality here, it does really nice. So if you can see here, the overall quality of this print was really nice. And I also ran some in my own filament in black because we would print this out in Polymaker, but with black and it's nice, it's durable. It feels uh, strong. The integrity is there. And this is something that I can put in front of a customer. Here is another one and you can see this one as well. This is for a different product and it's sized differently. And you can see again, really, really nice quality. And again, something that is client facing for sure. Now we're still working through some filament tuning and this is a, a jig uh, that we uh, that our clients also acquire. And this is for a specific product that is used for laser engraving. And what I'm noticing here is, and I've been talking to the folks at FL Sun, is that there's some opportunities, uh, you know, both slicing, calibration. There could be some firmware improvements that need to take place. Uh, I really look for things that are a lot smoother. And this is, by the way, I have played with the flow control. I have tweaked. Uh, many of the settings in the Orca slicer. And I've actually tried to replicate the slicer settings that I have for some of my other production printers to see if I could get close. I'm getting really close. I'm not 100% there. So for this type of prints, I probably wouldn't use this printer uh, in my production line for something like this. However, for something like this, it's a definite yes. This is, is a no-brainer for me. For this one, it really isn't. So again, you know, these tests that you saw here were done either using FL Sun's high speed filament, which I asked them to send me a roll of what they felt uh, they've done their certification and testing. And then this is what I leverage and produce. Now we also did a layer test, a, a first layer test, and we're gonna run this so you can see this in a couple seconds again. I have to say, you know, there's a slight defect over here that I, that I noticed, but this, is good. I've been seeing some really, really great first layer coming out of this printer without any tweaking. And I'm really looking at this as an appliance. Um, 
and this is what I've told FL Sun. I want a printer that I can unbox, I can set it to print, and I shouldn't have to do any tweaking. I shouldn't have to create profiles. I should have a low, medium, and high quality uh, profile inside of Orca that I could just use. And maybe, you know, what I would expect to do is to do some tweaking for the filament, you know, because if they don't have that profile, you know what, I can do that. I can do the calibration test to get things down where I want. But I'm really looking for something that prints out of the box. And I'll say so far, I've had that even though this is a first view, right? It's not final. And I'm still getting updates almost every week and I'm giving them feedback and they're making improvements. But let's take a closer look at the printer. Now, for the most part, when you look at the T1 Pro and you look at the T1, they look very similar, but there have been some improvements. One has been on how loud the printer is. And from three meters away, what they claim is around 55 decibels of noise is what you get. And when we put it to run, we're going to do that on camera, right? Now, keep in mind that this is a still a, I wouldn't call it a production unit, but just to give you a sense of what I'm experiencing. So, uh, so that's one of the things. And when you close this door, it does get a lot quieter, but I can tell you it is still loud. It is not whisper quiet, but it's, it's quieter in my experience uh, from some of the other products that I've reviewed in the past. And so when we open this up, what you'll see some common things. So first of all, you'll see that the filament spool is inside, right? You do have an optional mounting on the outside. You do have, again, uh, the CPAP here. You have the filament guide coming in. Uh, the overall first bed, um, I would say first layer, is pretty spectacular in this, and you're going to see that in a couple seconds. As we come down, you'll see, again, the build plate magnetic. Uh, this is also auto bed leveling. It's, it's just like the T1, right? So it has all those great features. But we're going to highlight everything that has changed uh, shortly for you. Uh, you'll notice here that you do have a LED strip that does a really nice job for illuminating. Let's take a look at the software. Now on the software side, you can see good information here uh, with top speed information that I'm connected to Wi-Fi, you know, the temperature of the bed, temperature of the nozzle. Um, I've been doing a lot of printing and you can see, uh, so this model right here, uh, that bottle cap holder takes 36 minutes to print. It takes a little bit over an hour on one of my other printers on a bamboo, for example. You could see as I scroll down the calibration uh, bed first la layer that was a 34 minute run let's see what else do we have uh, that we put in here the uh, actual star that you saw was 24 minutes that's pretty fast the lamp was three hours that was pretty thick and it had a lot of stuff going on there the cube xy cube that was six minutes uh, if we look at i have some other things because i've been printing like christmas trees and things like that that uh that vent reducer was an hour and 34 minutes right and then this one over here was an hour and five minutes, right? Each one of the tests, that smaller test was 58 minutes. And then these are other things that I've been testing with flow control, as you can see that I've been uh, running. So a lot of stuff going on here. And again, all these are local. You could uh, reprint these once they're stored. Here you have all of the controls, you know, movement, control, with predefined settings, fan settings, calibration. I am using Orca as, I, um, as I'm printing. Uh, and it's their proprietary Orca. Um, I could go here and look at some videos. So if I look at, for example, the uh, bottle cap opener, you know, I could go ahead and you know delete it. I can go back. Um, this is obviously accessible through Fluid and the actual software itself. I'm going to go ahead and run a print. And the one thing I wanted to show you when I run this print is what does the first layer look like here? And the actual movement that you're seeing here is very similar to what you have seen. Uh, with just in general the FL Sun line. So it's going to go on the side, it's going to raise, it's going to the uh, printing temperature, that temperature is going to raise, it's going to put that first line of filament down, and then it's going to start to print. And I actually didn't choose to do the bed leveling because I already run the bed leveling mesh, so I don't find that there's a need to do bed leveling every single time, but I want you to see how this first layer goes down and how clean that first layer is. It does a really, really nice job with the first layer. And then everything after that also has been coming out really nice. Despite the fact that this is a first look and it's still you know, being updated with firmware. All right, so now it's kicking in our first bead. And let's watch how well this thing does. And we're not gonna sit through the entire first layer bed test, but 
just to give you a sense so you can see how nicely the filament comes down and how nice it is doing its job. All right, now look at how clean that first layer is coming out. And keep in mind, again, this is a first look. Firmware is not final. Slicer is not final. And that first layer is looking really, really good. I also didn't run bed leveling before I ran this. So I'm sure that if there's any defects, I could have probably caught those by running uh, the bed leveling. But this is what I'm talking about. This is what I've been really impressed with this printer, despite the speed is what that bed leveling looks like. Uh, well, not the bed leveling, but the actual first layer is looking like. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pull back. We're going to let the printer continue to run. because You can get a sense of how things look right now. And what we'll do is we'll see how much noise is being generated uh, by the printer now. You can see that the fans are not going off a lot because it's actually running a little bit slower. It's running right now at 60 millimeters per second. And once it speeds up, then that's when you actually start hearing the fan make a lot more noise. And then also as it's moving left and right, that's when the noise kicks in. But let's check and see how things sound. Now, as we're doing this sound test, keep in mind that I do have a lot of white noise in this room. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the phone very close to the uh, T1 Pro and then I'm going to bring it more towards me, uh, towards the camera so that we can see what the sound difference is. All right, so now we're running that production job. We're running around 70 to 260 millimeters per second. It's going to be about an hour and 30 something minutes to run. Bed temperature is at 55, 60, and then my uh, nozzle is at 220. I'm going to stay quiet. I'm going to bring the actual sound meter to the camera so we can see it's around three feet away. Now keep in mind that this is a pre-production unit. This is a unit that doesn't have the most updated firmware. It's getting all the firmware as they're finalizing the product. And I would expect that the product is going to perform better. It's going to be you know, improved as final firmware and final software get become finalized. And I'm going to continue to update this. I've literally applied a couple of patches. So several software versions have come, come across. And so far, my overall experience with it has been really positive. Um, it's printed right out of the box, haven't had any defects, haven't had any failures. It is fast. It's cutting down my print time anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes, depending on the product. Like this one right here is going to be spectacular for us. And I'm using non-FL Sun filament. So I've been seeing good performance with their filament, and I've also seen good performance with mine. I've also then really liked the first layer. The, it's doing a really nice job there. And that's also something that's really important to me. I don't want to spend time tinkering with the machine. I want to spend time designing new prints. So guys, that wraps up our first look at the FL Sun T1 Pro. So far, I'm liking what I see. I'm really liking what I see.